Now, looks like everybody's singing songs about a white Christmas and praying for the same. We may have, it looks like. This keeps Amen. up. We may have the white Christmas. And Christmas is the time of year. I just wish it could be Christmas all the time. Amen. Everybody seems to be so friendly around Christmas time. <laughs> Wanting to help one another and everything. And everybody down where she says, Hi, you brother. Other times of year won't even speak to you. So I, it'd be good if it stayed Christmas, wouldn't it? <laughs> Amen. It's Christmas all the time. And the fact of all the air and everything there is about it, there's something about it that the world tries to make it an Xmas, you know. And but God still's got a Christmas in it somewhere. Has he? Amen. He sure has. He's got something Amen. about just the very names and the thoughts of the birth of the Lord Jesus. All oh, the world's put Santa Claus in his place, sure, but not to the Christian. No. It's still Amen. a Christmas. Now the Christmas is not a Protestant holiday; it's a Catholic day. Twenty fifth of December was months and months. Before our after or before our Lord was born, our Lord was born in April, but He wasn't born in December. If you Judy in December, it's colder than this. <laughs> so you know He wasn't born in December, and it's a spell. It's C H R I S T M A S, a Mass for Christ. It's a Christmas. We only have one Protestant holiday in America. And Mr. Roosevelt changed that for us. That's Thanksgiving. The rest of them are all Catholic days, every one of them, see. Mr. Roosevelt changed that for us. So we just have it on every Thursday or something, week or something like that. It isn't on a regular set day anymore. So, see what a bundle we got? The whole world has become a conglomeration of, of muck, sin, and despair. And it's got to get that way to blow up, see. The, the whole thing's pulled all the ties out, all the... Iron and stuff to make ships and bridges and so forth. What God put it together with and welded it together and mended it together like this. Taking all the gas and the oils and things out of it like that to burn and the gasoline and the cars and so forth. And pulling all the coal out to make electricity. See, you just hauling it out. It's just become a hub. Just with streaks and things out of it like that. And then the people's just become so sinful. It's just come a great big muck to it. It's just like it was not the beginning. God grieved that he ever made man. It just takes one little atomic jar to set the whole thing out of order there. Just exactly what he said would do. See? So we're just living in that day and are happy to be a Christian. Amen. Oh my. <laughs> my, what could I do? If I, I, I believe I'd go wild if I wasn't a Christian. Look at the thing. I don't see how people can stand it. I just don't understand how a man can walk on earth today without being a Christian. I wish anybody would give me a yeah. reason, some reason, it, why not to serve Christ. I, 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 you can't give a sensible reason. See, we're just, this is the day that we all are to be happy Amen. and ready. The great homecoming time is at hand. And oh my, it's just a teeny, teeny tekla brazier wrote on every nation, every wall, everywhere, every democracy, every kingdom, everywhere else is falling. Amen. Dark, weighed in the balance and found morning. Kingdoms has, kings has failed, and dictators has failed, democracies failed, churches yeah. has failed, human beings has failed, everything has failed. You say churches? Yes, sir. One of yeah. the biggest failures in the world is the church. And that's right. Churches has miserably failed. Everything's failed. But we receive a kingdom which will not fail. Jesus Christ. It cannot fail. And we are so happy for that. That it's a, not a church affair, it's an individual affair. It's not whether my church is saved, it's whether I am saved. It isn't whether my deacon's saved, or my pastor's saved, or my mother's saved, it's whether I am saved or not. Myself, I must be saved. Then I must tell them. And then, uh, if they're saved, wonderful. If they're not, I must still remain saved. That's, I must Amen. obtain my salvation. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Amen. To, I, I think every day for her on Eddie Pruitt's song that my hope, no, it wasn't Eddie Pruitt, I forget who wrote Now, my hopes is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful song? Amen. All around my soul gives way, and he's all my hope and stay, see. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When little doctor, forget his name was, he was preaching the power of the resurrection of Christ for the individual, a great formal church in New York City not long ago. 
I had it in the paper where it was cut out. And his congregation is all against him. He believed in the supernatural, the resurrection of Christ, the eternal life, the baptism of the Spirit to give life to the individual believer, and signs and wonders, and his congregation is fixed to put him out. And he had, they had a lease there. He had a, some option that he could stay at this church for so long. And the old days, just, they just sat there and soured out on the man preaching. But he was convicted that he was right. He was a sick man, too. Had, and he said, uh, no, I, he wasn't a sick man. I beg your pardon. He, he just died at the pulpit, but he wasn't a sick man. So he, they, he, they grieved him to death. And so they just soured down on him and wouldn't listen to him and everything. He just kept on preaching the truth. And they said... They, they had a, it's a social religion. All oh, we come together. And Mrs. Jones over here belongs to here. So we come together and we have our little tea parties and everything. It's just a social affair. But he believed that that was nonsense. That we should come together and be born again. And they made fun of him and everything about his religion and everything. And one morning while I stand there crying at the pulpit, preaching that Jesus Christ was reality, he had a heart attack. And he, uh, he, he started falling. And he stood back like that. And some of them, he had a couple of doctors in his audience, so they come pick him up. They put the thing on his heart. He said, he's got a heart attack. He said, sir, you're, you're, you're dying. He said, am I dying? He said, yes. So they have two of my faithful deacons to come here. They come here and lifted him up. And they said, now, what does this new religion, this thing that you're talking about mean to you now? And he said, now turn me loose. They turn him loose. He lifted up his hand. He said, On Christ's solid rock I stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. And as he did, he staggered backwards like this. There's a cross hanging behind me. He threw one arm over, one across, one over the other side like that. He said, All other grounds is sinking sands. All other grounds is sinking sand. Oh, God. That's the way. That's it. That's it. Died on the cross, you see, for all other grounds is sinking sands. Christ is the only hope we have. Our faith is built on nothing less. 